morning, everybody. Uh, this is uh, going to be a uh, training on uh, professional customer service phone skills. If you made it to the uh, Zoom meeting this afternoon, then this is great review for you. There will also be a quiz attached to this um, on a separate uh, thing. Uh, that way we can check and see how good of a job I did uh, getting the information to you. Uh, so these are great skills to learn whether or not you are going to be working on the phone at a job or just even in your everyday life. It's good skills to have um, for community independence and that sort of thing. While these skills are focused on answering the phone in a professional setting, they can be used in everyday life. Knowing how to answer the phone properly makes a good first impression on you and your company. It also helps to put the caller at ease, which will lessen any possible tension they may be experiencing due to having a complaint or a problem that they are calling about, making your own day more stress-free. The purpose of this training is to learn how to use excellent telephone customer service skills. The skills learned include how to greet a caller on the phone, how to demonstrate that you care about what they have to say using active listening and empathy, and are happy to be talking, taking their call and letting them know, let them hear you smile. So these are tips or steps for answering the phone professionally. Did you know that people can tell from the tone of your voice whether you are happy to talk to them or not? A simple thing you can do to put a caller at ease when answering the phone is to make sure you are smiling when you answer. Smiling makes you sound more friendly. Let's do a drill. Close your eyes while I pretend to answer the phone with a standard greeting. I'll do it once while smiling and once while not smiling. Uh, and I want to see if you can tell the difference. Thank you for calling the Center of Hope. This is Dan. How can I help you? That's the first one. Now the second one. Thank you for calling the Center of Hope. This is Dan. How can I help you? Can you tell which one I was smiling in? Professional greetings. Answer the call promptly and enthusiastically, referring preferably within three rings. Don't forget to smile before you answer the phone, as this will be reflected in your tone of voice and will be great for maintaining a positive attitude, not only during the call, but all day long. So a smile can actually affect your own mood as well as the customer's. Avoid, avoid short, informal greetings like hello, hey, or yo. Instead, use a greeting Greetings that start with good afternoon, good morning, and thank you for calling. As the example that I always use, the one that I have memorized, is pretty much thank you for calling the Center of Hope. How may I help you? So anytime I get a call from outside of the uh, agency, uh, if I don't know where it's coming from, if it's not like from Diana or um, one of my coworkers, I always answer the phone that way. It's a good tip because, you know, uh, it, like I said before, it makes a good first impression. All right, so the first step after you have greeted the customer is introduce yourself. Speak clearly. A picture that paints a thousand words, but the caller on the other end of the phone can only hear you. They cannot see your face or your body language. Therefore, taking the time to speak clearly, slowly, and cheerfully in a professional voice is very important. Even though with today's technology, you may already know the name of the person calling, and if they call on a, as a regular, on a regular basis as a customer, you may already know their number, and they may already know who's answering. It's important to clearly introduce yourself and the company you work for. Um, I said that uh, they can't tell your body language, but you should definitely, uh, if you're sitting in a chair, set up straight because it does help you speak clearer. Uh, so, um, well, body language per se isn't really important. Uh, posture sort of is for good uh, phone use. Have a memorized greeting. 
Use the memory use the memorized greeting like these. Good afternoon, this is Dan. How can I help you? Or the center of hope, this is Dan, how can I help you? Of course you use your own name. A memorized greeting like these um, can really help you when you're under stress. You don't want to be caught speechless or sounding confused when there's lots going on around you and the phone rings in a moment of stress. If you have a way you always answer practiced, then it will automatically sound courteous and you will be less likely to sound curt or angry no matter how you feel. Greeting the customer, introducing yourself in the company and offering help are so central to a beginning of a, beginning of a phone call conversation that you want to be able to do it pretty much in your sleep. So in that moment of stress or confusion, you don't answer the phone like Janine from Ghostbusters. And I have that clip here because it's pertinent and funny as heck. Might actually play it too. Let's give it a second. There we go. So the sound was a little bit low, but I'm sure you've seen that before. If you haven't, it's a great movie. You should check it out. But you see how uh, she was stressed, and you know, she's kind of new in the job, so she really didn't have anything memorized. And then Peter was messing with her, and she was mad. Uh, so she came off Kirk to the customer. Right now, they're in new business, and they're just starting out, and she just yelled at somebody. So that's not great. That's why you want to have something memorized. Offer to help. Always say, how may I help you? I'm going to stress that a lot today. As in the, the examples above, if you're answering the phone at your job, chances are that the person on the other end, end needs something. The customer is expecting you to have the answers they are seeking, but even if you don't have, even if you don't immediately know what uh, those answers are, they expect you to find them. In this this is demonstrated right off the bat by saying, how may I help you? In my life as a retail customer service representative, I have often made the mistake of saying to the customer, can I help you? Only to have the customer who has already been stressed out or upset or looking for something, they're lost. And so they get snarky and they say, I don't know, can you help me? Don't ask, can I help you? Of course you can help them. And you will help them, which is why you answer the phone. So answer, how may I help you? Get the caller's name and use it during the conversation. It tends to put a lot of people more at ease to use their name when you are speaking to them. It's a good idea to use uh, using their first name unless you didn't give unless they didn't give their last name. So um, you want to really uh, use someone's name. If they give it to you, you should write it down. If you're like me and you don't remember things well, um, you should have a pad and paper next to the phone so that when you're answering, you can write things down. Uh, but definitely make a note of their name. Um, uh, you know, uh, usually use the formal uh, um, 
Mr. and Mrs. unless they correct you otherwise, or maybe they only say, you know, this is Joe. If they say, well, this is Joe, then it's fine to just use um, their first name. Actively listen and actively empathize. A good technique for showing the customer that you hear them is to learn base is to learn to basically repeat back what they say to you after they have said it. You can use phrases like I hear what you're saying, is that correct? Or and to show empathy, you could say something like, That must be very frustrating. I'm sorry that that happened to you. So you're not interrupting them, but you're kind of making uh, interjections while they talk so that they understand that you're actually listening. Um, the video that I'm going to show here is really, really funny um, because they both are failing to actively listening, uh, failing to actively listen. Uh, Amy gets it. Uh, she realizes that uh, Sheldon is all about this video game. So while she wants the butter, she realizes she's not going to get the butter until she stops to listen to him. Uh, so this is a slight exaggeration on active listening, but I want you to notice, though, um, how in the beginning she, they weren't listening to each other, and then Amy started to actually use active listening techniques um, that gave Sheldon what he needed, but then it gave her an opening to get what she wanted to. So it's kind of a neat uh, customer service jujitsu she uses on them, so check it out. And again, I apologize if this is quiet. I'm not sure I can make it any louder, but if you if you want to watch it later, it's on YouTube. Sheldon and Amy, I love it. Okay, so what was Amy doing or not doing in the beginning that made Sheldon feel like she was not listening to him? What was Sheldon doing that made Amy feel like he was not listening to her? How did she change her behavior to make him believe that she had started listening and cared about his problem? Which then helped him, her get what she needed. Um, she stopped what she was doing uh, she put her you know, fork down and she just listened to him and she interjected. She empathized because she showed passion about what he was passionate about, even though it was fake, right? Uh, she was you know, not seriously, she doesn't care about the Xbox, but because it mattered to him, it mattered to her in that moment. Um, so she was, you know, actively engaged both emotionally and mentally because she was repeating back or asking for clarification if it needed to be. Um, these are all great customer service techniques. Um, so even though it's a slight exaggeration, as I said there, 
Um, it's definitely the way it's done, as they say. Um, after the customer is done speaking, you're going to want to, um, if you if you know the answer right off the bat, you know, if you know like this is the company's policy when that happens or whatever, it, whatever the customer needs, um, let's say she's going to need you to go check a price at a, you know that's on the shelf. So um, you're going to go do that, but you don't want to just be like, please hold, click. Uh, you want to really let her know what is going on and what you're going to do. Um, there's many reasons why you would need to put a customer on hold, um, as it's not always possible to be able to locate, locate the correct person or find the information that the caller needs immediately. Also, being placed on hold tends to be a frustrating and unproductive time for most callers, so handling the situation is extremely important. We've all sat on hold with that annoying hold music. Uh, if you need to put someone on hold, for instance, you might say, is it okay if I put you on hold while I get that answer for you? So if you're going to look up a price, is it okay if I put you on hold? Just don't just say, let me check, click. Um, so you want to tell her what you're doing, but you also want to get permission. Or, can I get your number where you can be reached? I need to check with my supervisor, and that might take several minutes. So if you know what they're asking you, it's not going to, uh, it's going to take longer than would be reasonable to hold. You might let them know that. They may insist on staying on hold anyway, but they might appreciate it if you say, listen, I don't want to waste your time. I'm going to get the answer for you, but I need to call you back. Is that going to be okay? Again, always ask. So I say tell the customer what you intend to do, but um, in a lot of the ways, it's asking the customer if what you intend to do is going to be okay for them. Uh, following a few simple practices will help you ensure the caller remains on the line and feels informed at all times. One, always perm ask permission to put the customer on hold and to wait uh, for the customer to answer. So ask them if you can put them on hold and wait for them to say yes. If you are responsible for answering multiple calls at once, always ask the caller politely, politely if you may put them on hold. Remember that the caller could have already waited several minutes before getting connected to you and may not take lately to be putting on hold again. Check back with the caller periodically, prefer preferably every 30 seconds. So if you have somebody that's checking on something for you um, and you're sitting next to the phone, um, you know, go back online every 30 seconds or so if it's taking that long to let her know that you haven't forgotten about her. Thank the customer for holding and apologize for the wait time if necessary. Transfer the caller to the person they were holding for or provide them with information that they requested. Have you ever called somewhere and had the other person answer and then immediately say, please hold, and then you hear it click and you're on hold? How did that make you feel? I know when that happens to me, I get very frustrated. I'm usually a very polite person, uh, but uh, we all have bad days. Uh, when I call and I've had a bad day on the phone already and then they do that to me, um, it can be very hard to keep my cool. So uh, just realizing that you can control the customer's emotions to some extent. Uh, if you don't have to poke the bear, don't poke the bear. If you can let them know that in spite of the fact that you're having, they're having a bad day, uh, you're here to help them and you care about how their time and, you know, you're checking on them and making sure that they feel taken care of. Um, ultimately, they're going to be nicer to you. Uh, because at least you're the first person to help them maybe today. All right, next one. Thanking the customer and ending the call. Lastly, be sure to thank the customer and ask if there's anything you can do for them. This reminds them that you are eager to help and makes them feel comfortable about calling you back and continuing to be your customer because you care. Ending the call. Ending the call is just as important as the initial caller greeting as uh, this was your last opportunity to make the caller feel completely satisfied with your service they received and that they hung up with a positive impression of your company or you, if it's just, you know, them talking to you at your house. Here are some tips on how to end the call professionally. Thank the customer for calling and summarize what you did for them. So you can just mention, you know, um, so I see we got that price for you. Is there anything else that we can do for you? Uh, let the customer know that you appreciate their business, uh, offer to help with anything in the future, so definitely going to say, 
you know, can I, uh, you know, please give us a call back if you need anything else from here. Um, say goodbye, but always let the customer hang up first. So if they call, they hang up first. You don't hang up until they hang up. That way you're sure they don't need anything else. I've had situations where I thought of something in the very last minute and then I, the representative hung up on the uh, first and then I couldn't ans ask my question. So just make sure they hang up first and then you know you've done your job and you didn't cut them off. Um, so a good example of an ending and just like in the beginning where you sort of memorize a greeting, um, you're going to want to memorize an ending. This one's rather complicated so it doesn't have to be this complicated but it's a good example. So you might say, Thank you for calling, Mr. Stewart. We appreciate your business, and it has been a pleasure doing business with you. If you find any additional need any additional assistance, please call us back at this number. Um, it could just be thanks for calling, and you know, uh, you definitely want to have something memorized. I find because just like uh, in the beginning, um, a canned response is helpful. Uh, ending the call the same way each time is also helpful. That way, you make sure you get out the information that you need to to make them feel comfortable um, and you don't forget anything. So that's the end of my customer service uh, phone skills lesson. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, as always, if there's something that I could have done better or something that wasn't clear, I'm still, uh, this is still a technology that I'm learning how to use, so I definitely appreciate any feedback you can give me. All right, guys, have a good day.